Now, uh, welcome you all once again uh, to part B, uh, preparation tips and presentation plan for glass frame. Here, uh, in our uh, part B, we have uh, 13 to 17 questions, uh, poetic comprehension for 5 marks. It's all uh, multiple choice questions. And here, we get the poem from uh, either from textbook or text independent or an unseen poem. So here, what exactly we have to remember and how we are supposed to present, we will see now the strategies. So most important uh, part to score higher marks is uh, this particular part. If you are listening careful enough, you will score uh, better marks and this decides exactly how you will get the score of it. And then, read the complete poem carefully and quickly to get the complete view of the poem. And then try to understand the entire details of the poem. Uh, focus your mind on related details and highlight them as you read it. For the second time when you read the poem, please highlight all the details, whatever are uh, required uh, for your understanding and uh, solving of the poem. And then read the questions or read the multiple choice questions and uh, uh, the, the passage, uh, return to the passage or the poem to write the MCQs properly or uh, to solve them properly. And then uh, yeah, remember one thing, uh, the poet always uh, aims at the inner meaning of the poem. So we have to understand the inner meaning of the poem. In your ninth class, you have uh, the poem River and there, so the poet talks about the river and the flowing of the river, the course of the river and then that he relates to the, the stages of the human life. So we have to understand how the inner meaning is related to the inner uh, Okay, understanding or the deeper understanding of the poet. Okay, so here, so we have to uh, go with the poetic comprehension in this way. And the next uh, question number 18 to 22 is about uh, editing errors. Okay, so here in the editing errors, we have uh, two different parts in the editing errors. One is uh, edition and the other one is uh, omission. So these two parts are there. So we have to be very very careful because uh, uh, here the students uh, get confusion most of the time. So in the editing and the omission, how we are supposed to write, we will see now. So writing process uh, to improve a draft uh, by correcting errors is called as uh, editing errors. And then uh, uh, this makes, the edition makes the effective sentences and the correct sentences in the editing process. So, what are the contents that include in the editing errors is this. Okay, so the verb forms that is tenses and then you have articles, the active voice and passive voice. We have conquered. Conquered means subject verb agreement with each other. And then a reported speech. We have a address and parts of speech. Nouns, adjectives, adverbs and all the remaining things. And then a sentence rearrangement. So when the words are jumbled, you have to put them in the correct order. So that is also there under the editing. And then uh, we also have uh, uh, prepositions and conjunctions, uh, where you have uh, wrong prepositions used or wrong conjunctions used. And the next term, we have uh, omission. Omission is the part where act of omitting or act of removing something. So we leave out uh, a piece of information which is uh, irrelevant or which is not required or uh, sometimes uh, used to two times, right? So, what are the contents in this which we are supposed to use it? Okay, so here uh, generally we avoid the excess words whatever are used. So more than requirement if it is there, when we avoid, when you remove that, that is called uh, omission. So next, uh, uh, so now that is okay, how to solve editing errors easily? and how to uh, understand the things in it. So read the following passage carefully before you attempt the errors. So read the passage completely so that we get an idea about how to solve the editing errors easily. And then identify the tense of the passage. So if you understand the tense or identify the tense of the passage, most of the problems are solved. So if you look at one particular tense, if the passage is in past tense started, the entire passage mostly would be in the past tense. So if you understand the tense of the passage, most of the problem is solved. Next, uh, under the, uh, underline the errors or identify the missing word. So that's what uh, we have to understand here. So next, uh, 
take time to go through every details of the errors. So okay, everything, whatever you just write or uh, whatever you just want to edit, please go through each and every detail of the passage thoroughly and then try to underline the words which are there given. So whichever you feel the errors, you try to underline it and then see if it is really the error or not. If at all, even after going through many times, even if you read many times and you don't find any error, so please write uh, the word no error, should not leave empty finding no error there, so you should compulsively write uh, no error there in that. So create a certain uh, editing errors by forming into groups. Okay, so if you are uh, really willing to practice more and more editing error uh, passages, so form into groups or you know or by your own self take a passage and try to edit that words and then uh, make the uh, editing error passages so that uh, we get a complete understanding about the editing errors. Now uh, let us look at question numbers 23 to 27. Do as selected and uh, this includes 10 marks, 5 twos are 10 marks. This is one of the most important, uh, the decisive factor to get a uh, GPA 10. So we have to be very careful in this section and then here uh, we are supposed to write the, uh, the grammar and then we have certain uh, topics included in this grammar. So nowadays uh, if you just look into the papers which government has given recently, so most of the times uh, they, there are certain topics very frequently the questions repeated. So they are, uh, the first one is uh, adding the suitable question tags. And then second one is uh, active voice, passive voice and then we have a uh, reported speech, direct and indirect speech. Then we have a uh, degrees of comparison uh, and then here we have a uh, simple compound complex sentences. Under the simple compound complex sentences, uh, the things which very frequently came are uh, not only but also, uh, neither nor, either or also is another one more topic. Then we have a uh, though, although, even though, for those ones. And then uh, we have uh, to, to uh, so that not, very and so, so all those things. And then if clause. So these are the very common topics that we generally get in the grammar. So before you just go, uh, in order to write this grammar, you have to make a rough draft in answer sheet and then uh, try to solve it beforehand so that uh, uh, you don't uh, do any strikings. Because uh, the part B, you should not strike anything. So we have to practice in answer sheet uh, before you write it. Once you are uh, very careful enough uh, in order to write the answer, then you can directly write in your answer sheet so that you won't get any strikings properly. So next one uh, is the clause test of question number 28, 28 to 32. Uh, it is for 5 marks. Clause test is a multiple choice questions. One passage is given and certain words are removed from that. So whatever the removed words are there, for that the options are given. Four options, multiple choice options are given and then you have to choose from that. So here, uh, place the right choice by the elimination method. See whatever the four choices are there, in that there are certain words which are not related to the uh, blank. So we eliminate the words. Maybe you have another two or three choices at the end left out. So mostly there are uh, two choices and sometimes three choices will be there. So from that you have to select the right word. So you have to place each word in that particular blank and then see which word really shoots the answer so that the right word you will be able to get it. So now the next one is uh, choosing the right word from the choices given. There are two choices given here, two words are given. And then in the bracket, uh, if the two words are given, you have to choose from that. So this is what uh, for five marks. So then now, uh, Read the entire passage carefully before you go through uh, to write the answers. Please go through the entire passage and then uh, start placing uh, each word in the plan and then uh, check the meaning of it. Okay, so is it the right meaning uh, properly given to it or not? And then uh, after checking whether this word is right or not, at the end uh, we have to choose the correct word and uh, write the answer. So. Uh, this is what the uh, uh, section number from 37 to 33 to 37. So now let us go over with the next section. Now uh, let us look at uh, question number 38 to 42. 
here I choose the correct form of the words given in the brackets. So there is some base word is given. Basing upon the base word, you have to guess the correct form of the word and then write it in the blank given. So read the passage and try to supply the correct form, either the noun, verb or any other form that is suitable. So if you do not have a complete idea about the passage, then you will definitely not be able to write the proper form. So you have to read the passage properly, you have to understand the passage properly and then what exactly is the word. For example, if the word before a blank is a preposition, after the preposition it comes the noun or adjective. So you have to just check in that way and then we are supposed to supply the correct form of the word. And then how to understand the form in the bracket first in order to supply the word. So what is that word? What is the parts of speech of that uh, base form of the word? If the verb is given, should we write an adjective, should we write a noun, or should we write adverb, and so on. So and then we'll try to supply the words. Sometimes uh, if the students look at the word hard, and you know he works hard, so hard itself is adverb. But students, they misunderstand the word hard and they supply yellow since it is adverb and they write the words hardly. But hard and hardly, they have got different meaning. So you have to understand whether the same word is supposed to be placed on the different word. And one more a misunderstanding for the students is that, so if any word is given in the bracket, that word should not be written again okay, in the blank. So there is no uh, word, uh, there is no meaning like that. So in thinking it. So recently there was one exam, okay, in that the word is given as born and uh, when you have uh, completed the filling of the blank also, we had got the same word born. So we do not uh, have any misconception that you should not write the word which is given in the bracket, nothing of that sort. So if the word is supposed to be fitting in the blank, you can compulsory write that word. And the next one, question number is 43 to 47, the last section. And here, the, the, the rewrite the underlined word as directed. So, however, they ask you to write, you are supposed to write the words in that way. So, here we have uh, five marks. Okay. So, then we have synonyms, antonyms, the right form of the words, and the meanings, and the right form of the uh, word which is given. So, everything are there. So, basically, this particular text comes from the uh, textbook itself. So, this is a textual passage. So if you have thorough understanding of the textbook, you can uh, definitely write about it. So you have to write the uh, synonym, okay, same meaning as the word given or a synonym both are same. So opposite meaning or antonym is the same word and the right form, so of it is exactly sometimes some other form is given and uh, they ask you to write the right form. Sometimes uh, they ask you the correct verb form, okay. So the other verb form also they ask you, for example, uh, the word write is there and you, they ask you the other verb form that is wrote or even you can write written also. So this is what uh, the way of uh, solving it. So I hope you really like uh, okay, my channel and the uh, instructions that I have given you to present. So if you follow this instructions of uh, part A and part B, so I think uh, more than 75 to 76 marks you can easily score out of 80 and uh, GPA 10 is yours. So all the best students and then uh, see you in the next video. Keep following my video. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you one and all. See you in the next video.